All right, now we're going to find out for sure just where we stand with the new North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un. As the United States and North Korea are having their first nuclear talks since Kim Jong-il's death. Let me go to the Associated Press. There's an article. Uh, the United States and North Korea have resumed talks today on this February 23rd, 2012, it's delayed by, it was delayed by the death of, of course, North Korea's Kim Jong-il two months ago. And the United States envoy is saying they've covered the U.S. food aid and other topics already in the discussions. The discussions could provide signs of whether North Korea's new government is ready to agree to, to steps demanded by Washington and neighbors there in North Korea to restart broader international disarmament talks, which are meant to provide aid and diplomatic concessions in return for North Korea abandoning its nuclear weapons program. Now, think about this moment. What America's offering to North Korea is this. Disarm all of your nukes. Let us send food. Let us send aid. Let us get along. That's the proposal. Let's see. Kim Jong-il's death on December the 17th upended a deal between the United States and North Korea, and it would have suspended the uranium enrichment in return for food aid from Washington as a precursor to restarting the broader talks. The meeting in Beijing, China, may partly reveal North Korea's goals under new leadership Kim Jong-un who has vowed to follow in his father's policies. The talks today were substantive, substantive and serious, and we covered quite a number of issues, said U.S. Envoy Glenn Davies. He told reporters after meeting his counterpart, Kim Kyle Kwam, for almost six hours over two sessions, first at the North Korean embassy, and then they met at the United States embassy there in China. Um, the talks today were uh, very good. The talks are going to continue again also on Friday, which will be tomorrow. And Davies would not provide any other details, saying that only the, you know, the nutritional aid was discussed. Okay, so uh, it looks like the, you know, least, hey, they're at the table. You got Kim Jong-un's people sitting at the table with the United States of America. And the, and the two sides are talking about food, talking about nutritional aid for the people of North Korea. And of course, in return, we're talking less weapons, disarmament, your nuclear weapons, stop enriching uranium. They've got a lot of nukes already. But how about stopping the enriched uranium process and disarming these nukes? Do I expect that to happen? No. Actually, Quite the contrary, I expect North Korea to say, look, we might stop, slow down in the enrichment, but we're not going to get, disarm the nukes we have. Not as long as South Korea sits next door and not as long as there's all these different threats around the world. But at least one thing you could say is taking place here, that it shows the weakness in the North Korean position. They're talking about food. When food becomes the priority over your military power, then that means your nation is in trouble economically and on the brink of an uprising or a coup because if the people get hungry, they got to do something, even if it is a brutal iron fist regime. Look what's going on in Syria. The people got hungry. The people got tired of the oppression. The people got tired of living way below the poverty level and decided it was time to take out their leader since Tunisia got rid of Ben Ali and Egypt got rid of Jose Mubarak and Libya brutally removed Muammar Gaddafi. Why not get rid of Assad? The problem is Assad has something that the others never had the backing of Russia and China. Certainly Russia. 
And with that such that being said, he continues to use the brutal massacring of the people there in the streets of Damascus and in the little city, smaller city of Homs. It's getting ugly, folks. But we're getting down to the black horseman. You see, the red horseman of war has definitely been galloping and has been for centuries. But the black horseman of the apocalypse brings a different perspective, hunger, and a need for shelter, with people losing their homes, can't find jobs, and getting scarce on food, things will get even more violent. And Jesus prophesied, Jesus predicted, Jesus told us that these days would come. I'm praying that Kim Jong-un will succumb to the political pressures within his own country and, his own, and, and, the, and the pressures of a hungry nation. But I don't expect a man who has his belly full doesn't, isn't as desperate. It's, it's the man who doesn't. And he eats and does whatever he wants, and so he will try to maintain power. The question is, can the pressures and the options and the offerings coming from the United States be enough to convince Kim Jong-un to change course? Don't look for it. Don't look for it. I'm Paul Begley. We'll be right back. We've got a lot to talk about. Are you serious? There's so much going on. We've got to contain it. We've got to look at it. We've got to prepare ourselves for the things that's happening around the world. If you don't have Christ as your Savior, I really, really, really ask you to do that. There's been so much discussion about this radio frequency identification device, this new microchip that was designed actually by uh, Lucent Technologies, um, but not only them, other manufacturers, how that this thing has the ability to record all of your medical records, all of your identification, your social security, your address, your banking records, your insurance policies, and everything and anything that has to, and it's a GPS on top of that, You're, you know. Perry Stone also went public and uh, he actually did about three days before I did as he stood in front of a crowd of about 2,000 people and explained these mandates that are in the Obamacare bills. And uh, it's not in just one bill. Uh, the bill, of course, H.R. 3590 is where the bulk of the Obamacare process is. But you have to also look at the language that was being drafted in, in H.R. 3200, much of which was implemented in H.R. 3590, and also you have to take a look at H.R. 4872. There's some of the language there. And then you have to go back even to 2004 under President George W. Bush, where the FDA approved the development of the radio frequency identification device for medical records purposes. So, Having an understanding where the, the four different spots in 2004, the HR uh, 4872, the big Obamacare bill, which I mistakenly quoted the wrong one when I said HR 3200. HR 3200 was the original drafted bill, but the bulk of that language was, was adopted into the Obamacare bill in HR 3590 section 2561. But if you look at the language in the 2004 approval of the bill and then look at the language in the HR 4872 bill and the HR 3590 bill, you'll see that the wording from HR 3200 is sprinkled in those three locations, thus making what I'm saying what Perry Stone is saying. We were both mentioned in an article I just read last night where both of us are being criticized for standing against the mark of the beast. And we're not saying that this chip is the mark of the beast, but I'll tell you, Perry Stone's very convincing in a YouTube video that you can watch. And if you want to read the article about he and I, it's in God Discussions. It's at God Discussions is the article about Perry Stone and myself standing to protect and to warn the people of the coming 
Apocalypse. We'll be right back.